like it. Give it up for Rory! <laughs> Uh, this one I wrote today is called. Uh, um, is anyone over thirty here? Oh, good. So no one reads newspapers. Okay. <laughs> it's called spoken word is the new crack. Spoken word is the new crack. No, you know what? Scratch that. The real enemy is all the video games that are turning all of our children insane. I know. My brother's played a lot of Destiny. Just yesterday, he launched himself out into space and shot a cyborg with a laser cannon. <laughs> <laughs> he settled in court. <laughs> No, oh, wait, it's the violent music that's back in fashion. The rhythms and rhymes of the downtrodden underclass, they're corrupting the young and fast. Just last week, I t tuned into rock radio, and in an instant, I died from Class A overdose. <laughs> Forget that, it's the films that are rotting their minds. They're a source of violence and addiction. If you want the truth, then look no further. Novels are the real cause of murder. Remember, if someone offers you a paperback, just say no. <laughs> because words are the new crack, but what about sheets of propaganda sprinkled with soft core porn? Now we call that a newspaper. <laughs> uh, this one's I did about technology. It's called Built to Last. Uh, this poem isn't built to last. This time next week it'll be different. I'll have installed the updates or synced it on my laptop. By the end of this evening, it will have been forgotten. It's inevitable. It's like those old memories in Inside Out that crumble into dust. I miss when being built to last wasn't a novelty. I have a Game Boy that was made in 1989, and aside from that time where I glued the screen back on, it still works. You know how much game you can get out of four AA batteries? 20 hours. 20 hours raising a complimentary team of Pokemon that all have really cool themed names like Jackknife, Nightwork, and Treason. You know how much life I get out of my iPhone 5? Trick question. None. <laughs> and Pokemon is not on it. You know what's on it? Angry Birds. Fuck Angry Birds. <laughs> They're getting a movie. I never looked at my Game Boy and went, yeah, I need a fingerprint scanner on that. <laughs> I wish I could play longer than an episode of Game of Thrones. Oh. <laughs> it's not that I haven't moved at the times. So I don't point at an iPhone user and scream, BURN THE WITCH! <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> I value battery life without being able to tell what the time in is Helsinki. <laughs> or to get Siri to understand me. You know, there's a Game Boy in New York that survived a bombing in the Gulf War and still runs. My iPhone, my iPhone 5 cracked because I looked at it funny one time. <laughs> I might not be built to last, but I tell you what, I'm going to play Pokemon Blue later, because I've got 20 hours of battery left, and I forgot to charge my phone. <laughs> I've got one of them, because this one's quite long. It's about an all-nighter I did, it's called Eight Hours of Purgatory. I don't write enough. I don't sleep enough. Somebody should stop me reading paperbacks and making playlists that I'll likely never listen to because I can't be trusted. And it happened, I have reached the point that every man of reason and rationality must face. Yesterday I did an all night, so it wasn't planned. I go to sleep fairly on late anyway, and whether or not I wake up in time for anything is up to chance. But last night wasn't like that. As I lay down and thought of England, nothing happened. One in five. <laughs> 2am and this was it, I'd lost at sleep, it's not like I even had to try or anything. As I lay awake, staring wide-eyed at the crap creeping across my ceiling and listening to the heaving of a student house sleeping, I was quietly seething and disbelieving of the fact that I wasn't asleep. It wasn't even near a deadline or anything. It's not like I was planning on doing anything. On the upside, this would give me more time to work on that script. Or that author study. Or the portfolio. Make the most of it, why not? So at 2.30 a.m. I turned on my light, I reached over for my bag and I set to work. And that's a lie. I read You Only Live Twice. <laughs> Did you know it was the last James Bond book released in Ian Fleming's lifetime? <laughs> Did you know that it had the first film adaptation that discarded large amounts of the book's plot in favour of an original screenplay? Did you know that Roald Dahl wrote said screenplay? I do, because I stayed up all night. <laughs> I made a playlist that surprisingly didn't ca contain Insomnia by Faithless, which, by the way, go listen to the monster mix. <laughs> it was 3.30 a.m., cut me some slack. It's a substandard Ian Fleming book. He seems more interested in showing off his knowledge of Japan than telling any sort of story. The travel elements of previous books have completely overwhelmed the narrative. And for 50 pages of thriller, there's 200 of infodump filler. 4.30 a.m., and oh my god, this playlist is amazing. It's an epic patchwork of art that spans from proto-glam rock to late 70s post-punk new wave to the theme to that new Pokemon game. You know, the nice one that's being played on the piano? 
<laughs> and then 5am seemed like the ideal time to start psychoanalyzing myself and I realized I'm still something of a pessimist because that way I'm always either right or happy and I guess that in itself isn't right because in this case I was right because even though the employment right book that grabs you by the lapels and shapes you not stirs you, my disinterest in the work I should have been drafting and redrafting is reflected in Bond's burned out approach towards life and his sense of humor is a surefire indicator of both madness in author and his written avatar. It's one that strikes a particularly resonant note with me at 5.30am. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even Fleming wanted to align the books to be slightly closer in backstory to the films, but at this point he'd already written Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, Moonraker, Diamonds Are Forever, From Rush With Love, Doctor No, Goldfinger, Fewer Eyes Only, Thunderball, The Spy Who Loved Me, and Honor Majesty's Secret Service, and now, now he's concerned about continuity? <laughs> <laughs> Once killed Blofeld, spoiler, and got amnesia as of 6.30am, I feel that way the previous day has stretched out too far and become an unending singularity of mediocrity. A bit like The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should take a leaf out of Bond's book and move to Japan and blow up a castle using a mud volcano. <laughs> 7 a.m. and I'm looking out at my back garden with some longing feeling for the sun to rise over a garden of death like the one in the book run by Guntram Shatterhand, a.k.a. Ernst Stavro Blofeld, so I can head out and breathe in a cloud of toxic fumes to pull my lungs inside out and burn my eyeballs like peeled grapes, leaving me to blindly stagger into a pool of piranha fish who'll strip me down to the bone like the Depeche Mode song which I'm currently listening to. <laughs> I'm grieving his late wife, Bond's remarkably chipper, until he strangled Blofeld to death with his bare hands. Comes some slack, the man was trying to behead him. I still have an urge to find a proverbial lit match and burn the entire bloody paperback down to the spine and rewrite the entire thing from scratch. What the fuck, Ian? Used to be good. <laughs> it's 8am and I'm not even tired. It's 2pm and I've missed all my seminars. And I awaken with this thought, though. Drake might have said you only lived once, but Ian Fleming's had one over him for almost 50 years prior. Now who's laughing? I'll tell you what, not me. Or Ian, who's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this one's my serious one. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Kate for this one as well. Uh, I'll just go into this one. This one's about bullies. Well, they'd be the worst kind of people, I'd say, and I, if I wasn't certain, I'm not exhibiting similar symptoms because they are symptoms because it's a disease, and despite what my, I tell myself, I fear I may have caught some of it myself because that's what happens with a prolonged extended exposure. It's the most horrific of things. I tell my brother on Skype how to deal with bullies as if I know what to do, but I don't really. What's curdle in my mouth, and the thing is, who even knows? Because it's a disease and it's a thing I've got little idea of how to deal with. Who does, really? Just It sucks all the time. It sucks all of the time. And the mentality gets to you. You get bitter. And you pass it on. And on. And you make other people feel as bad as you yourself have felt in the past. And the feelings worsens. And you pass it on. And it worsens. And oh, Christ, it's a savage circle. It's almost impossible to break. Because in this case, the breaking is to fix it. And you don't remember how because you get wired wrong and, you know, fuses blow, impacts taken, and I don't know what to tell my brother about bullying because I'm not certain that I'm not exhibiting similar symptoms and I'm afraid he might notice and hate me the way I hated people who bullied me because, uh, bullies, they'd be the worst kind of people, I'd say. Thank you. <laughs> And it's a uh, list poem because, ha, huh, who needs a final version? You can just edit and make up as you go along. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open with a weak or unrelated line. Don't overuse metaphors and similes. For as they say, don't play cards against humanity with your parents. It will go to dark places very quickly. <laughs> Don't overuse the word literally because, oh, what? You literally shat yourself. Why would you be telling me <laughs> if this actually happened? Don't believe this line because it is a lie. Or is it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't play regular Monopoly when you play Star Wars Monopoly. It's right there. It's based on the original trilogy. You'll love it. No, please come back. <laughs> Don't create a doge mean without full knowledge of its grammatical structure. If there are actual grammatical rules to doge speak. There should be a single word expressions of pleasant surprise, such as wow and or oh, gosh, and two word expressions that must be made of words that don't go together in conventional grammar. Examples of doge speak are many happiness or very smile. If the two words conform to a conventional grammar, such as such happiness or many smiles, then they can't be accepted as true doge speak. <laughs> 
Don't make lengthy digressions. <laughs> <laughs> Firefox is your default browser. You know, uh, no one likes crashing. If you do, you are wrong. <laughs> don't use earbuds on a public transport. Don't mistake being a decent human being for political correctness gone mad. Don't have a personality in school. Save it for university. <laughs> don't repeat yourself. Don't repeat yourself. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> don't use a highlighter over pencil writing because it smudges horribly. Don't wear a t-shirt with your favourite artist's face on. I've actually got a Ghostbusters shirt on. <laughs> don't force your work to rhyme, as it will sound forced most of the- Don't have <laughs> As goose tastes pretty much like beef, and it's the fattiest ass meat you will ever have. The fun you can have with disguising the fat in a mayonnaise jar will just outweigh the fact that it's really expensive for what it is. <laughs> and it, it's, it's awful. Don't buy coffees from Starbucks because they don't pay tax unless you're a student, in which case, ha, hypocrisy. <laughs> Don't go to a poetry reading if you're severely hungover, you'll risk losing your balance. Don't go to a poetry reading if you're severely hung, you will risk losing your balance. <laughs> Don't think too hard about that big joke. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, if the guy's got an axe and talking to himself about the chosen ones, I'd still walk on the other side of the road. Don't wear sunscreen. You live in England, accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try an I know. Thank you. <laughs>